Hey Beckham and Wando, I'm Scarlett Lewis and you're watching East Cooper Student News. On today's show, we'll introduce you to a girl who's breaking stereotypes in the workshop and turning her CAS class into a career. Plus, get an inside look at what training is like for the JROTC, including all the obstacles and fitness tests. And we'll tell you what home schools and CCSD are doing now to improve student attendance. It all starts right now on ECSN. Thanks for watching ECSN. March is Women's History Month. Women's History Month celebrates the contributions and achievements of women throughout history. It illuminates the important yet often overlooked roles women have played in shaping societies, cultures, politics, sciences, arts, and many other areas. In honor of this, we wanted to kick off our show highlighting some of the amazing women in our East Cooper community. ECSN reporter Lucy Huss introduces us to a girl who is thriving in a male-dominated field. Over at the East Cooper Automotive Building, students are able to learn and practice all the skills needed to be successful in the auto mechanic industry. But one student in particular is defying all gender roles. With her purple goggles, Wando Jr. Audrey Rankin sets herself apart from the boys in her class. She is one of two girls in her Intro to Auto Tech class. Mr. Streets brought up that if you don't want to like share glasses or share gloves, like you can bring your own. I definitely think that that is something that sets me apart from them. Originally involved in engineering, Audrey switched to auto tech and realized this is something she wants to do as a career. I was doing engineering at the CAS and then my guidance counselor brought up auto tech and thought that it would be something interesting and more fun to be more hands on. I took the intro to auto tech just to, be, um, to see if this is something that I want to do in the future and it's definitely something that I'll look into further. The semester is halfway over and being in a room full of boys hasn't scared her one bit. Audrey takes inspiration from women who are just like her which keep her going. Honestly, just being in such a male-dominated career in and of itself, seeing women, not only me, but other women being more integrated into these careers is definitely a big part of my inspiration. In the long run, Audrey hopes to be someone girls like her can look up to. But for now, putting herself out there and getting involved in class is taking her a step closer to achieving her goals. I definitely hope that I can create a career in this and become an inspiration for younger girls. When I first started this semester, I was really scared that I wasn't going to know anybody and that it was going to be really awkward, but definitely putting myself out there and not being afraid to ask questions and being myself is definitely a big part of this. Audrey is working hard to set an example for girls like her that are also interested in the automotive industry. Great job, Audrey. Reporting for ECSN, I'm Lucy Huss. Back to you, Scarlett. Thanks, Lucy. In honor of Women's History Month, that story you just saw was produced entirely by girls. A lot of students in auto tech are passionate about cars, and ECSN reporter Andrew Peterwright tells us more about how Mount Pleasant is welcoming car enthusiasts to town each weekend. Daru Barham spends her Saturdays at Mount Pleasant Town Center, but not for the shopping. They also want other people to relate to and talk to, and you know, talk about the same interests, which is cars. And on Saturday mornings, you'll see more of these kinds of cars in the town center parking lot instead of the sedans and family SUVs that most people use to get from point A to point B. I think people usually tend to focus on cars just to, you know, get one place to another. And they don't really care to put on much effort to make it look nice or, you know, get a good model. But not here. At Cars and Coffee, each Saturday, people like Drew take the time to meet with similar-minded people and show off all kinds of different cars. People usually bring their cars if they have cool cars that they want to show to other people and other people just look around. I'm interested in cars because it really is like a community on itself and you get to work with both mechanics and also like just accessorizing your car so it's like putting both things together. For the car enthusiasts, Cars and Coffee isn't just about admiring cool cars, it's about the community they belong to and support. Reporting for ECSN, I'm Andrew Peterwright. Thanks Andrew. If you want to check out Cars and Coffee, it's every Saturday at Town Center from 8 to 11. It's no secret that teenagers like cars, especially driving them. Getting a license is a huge rite of passage for a high school student, but with it comes big responsibilities. 
Earlier this month, Wando hosted people from the southeastern chapter of the National Safety Council, Mount Pleasant PD, and State Farm Insurance to educate students on the dangers of distracted driving. The South Carolina Department of Public Safety says every 90 minutes a teenager is involved in a deadly crash, and the National Safety Council says that more teenagers that are in a car at one time, the more likely a teen driver will be involved in a deadly crash. Officials say that's why they held the driving event. Part of the driving event was educating students about how traffic stops work, as well as traffic control devices. For the past few weeks, the Wando PAC has been really busy. Students put on their spring musical, which was Mean Girls. For Wando, a spring musical is nothing new, but this one was different because it was theater teacher Mr. Moser's first musical as Wando's theater teacher, and he says it was a huge success. Oh, I'm so excited for this to be my first musical here at Wando. I think it's a great show that a lot of people know and a lot of people relate to, and I think it's going to be a great program builder for us here at Wando um, to get more people involved in theater. Um, but overall, I think this show is just a lot of fun, and it shares a lot of joy, and overall, it's got a really great message because even though this is a, you know, a show based on a movie that came out 20 years ago, the same things still apply today, especially when it comes with high schoolers and mean girls. <laughs> This year, the theater department put on three big shows, The Crucible, Puffs, and Mean Girls. The writer of Mean Girls the Musical, Tina Fey, labored over crafting this play. And many can agree that writing is art, and artificial intelligence is starting to make its way into the art world. With artificial intelligence writing essays, scripts, and music, will the line start to blur between human-created art and AI-generated material? I wanted to see if students would be able to tell the difference between artificial intelligence and human creation. Okay, so I have some lyrics here. Some have been written using AI, more specifically ChatGPT, and some have been written by real people and are from actual songs. Cool. And you're okay. gonna have to guess which is which, okay? Okay, all right, sounds good. Here are the first two lyrics. I want you to be happy, free to run, get dizzy on caffeine, funny friends that make you laugh, and maybe you're just a little bit dappy. Here's the second lyric. Windows down, music up, cruising through the town, Feeling alive with the wind blowing around, laughter fills the air, joy in every sound. Okay, I'm thinking the first one is, the first one's AI and the second one is real. I feel like the first one, like the dappy, I feel like a real person yeah. wouldn't write that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. The first one's AI. Mm-hmm. And the second one is a real song. Well, you're wrong. So the Are first you one, <laughs> the first one is a song called "Youth" by Glass Animals, and the second one was oh actually my AI. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. So here's the second pair of lyrics. Okay. Mm -hmm. Underneath the city lights, in the rush of the crowd, there's a secret spot where our love's allowed. In the chaos of the world, we find our space in this sacred place. Second lyric: This will be the best day of my life. Flying faster, fading out of sight. All it took was you to show me how the world's on fire, but nothing can stop me now. Okay, I'm thinking the first one's real and the second one's AI because I feel like I've heard that in a song, like the first one. Okay, the first one is real, the second one's AI. Oh. Um, I think the first one's fake. Well, you haven't heard it in a song because Are you it is AI. Stop <laughs> yeah. it. You're actually right. Yeah. The first one is fake. And the second one is a song called Nothing's Alright by Witch Gang. Now, this is the last pair of lyrics. Okay. Let's see if you can get this one right. Okay. Through the highs and lows, we'll stand side by side. In your eyes, all my fears subside. With every whisper, you soothe my doubts away. In your love, I find my strength to stay. Okay. And then, moments fleeting, we're just train cars passing. The way you slip through my fingers, cold ice glaciers never lasting. First one's real, second one's AI. First one's real and the second one's AI. Um, I think the first one's fake. Good. You're actually right. The first one was fake. <laughs> oh, for three. <laughs> oh my God. All wrong. Are you the first serious? one is okay. AI and the second one is this a song is not, called This is not my favorite name. Right My Wrongs by Kamari. So, what do you think about that, that you couldn't tell the difference? I think that I'm going to start listening to AI. <laughs> I'm going to start listening to AI music. Looks like we were two for nine. AI actually might be taking over the world. I'm Scarlett Lewis, reporting for ECSN. In the classroom, teachers are using more and more virtual platforms like Canvas. Artificial intelligence is also creeping into the classroom. 
making school content more accessible to students than ever before. But nationwide, schools are seeing an attendance drop off. ECSN reporter Maria Francesca Pacone is telling us how Charleston County and its home schools are handling the issue. Dropping attendance rates are a growing problem across the county, and Charleston County is no different. According to the Post and Courier Superintendent Anita Huggins, says more than 20% of Charleston County students are chronically absent. Nationwide in 2015, more than 7 million kids were chronically absent. That number has doubled. In 2022, almost 15 million students were chronically absent. In South Carolina, the Department of Education considers a student chronically absent if they miss 18 or, 18 or more days regardless if the absences are excused or not. Wander Principal Mr. Coker says that he's been trying to create an inclusive environment to help more kids enjoy the school day. One thing we plan to do is exactly what I just uh, said before, is just in, in improve the overall student life and student engagement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at doing various different uh, incentives for next year, um, looking at doing something called ballet classes that we're kind of working on, um, different committees right now with and trying to uh, formulate what that's going to look like. But my big passion is focusing on the whole student life here at Wando High School. So finding ways to get you involved, get you excited about coming to school, at different events for you to be excited to come in school about, and uh, anything that we can offer here to make uh, student life uh, uh, more uh, appealing to students to do that. So. Superintendent Huggins says that CCSD has made some changes to help their attendance. So far, the chronic absentee rate has dropped 1% since 2022. Reporting in the newsroom, I'm Maria Francesca Picone. Thanks, Maria. Here at ECSN, we think going to class is important. Here's a little jingle that might get stuck in your head, but it might also keep you in class. It's fun to go to our school, we said, student. Learning is super cool, and your teachers just want to see you succeed. There's no need to be unhappy when you're at school. It's fun to stay in school. Please go to class, don't go to Chick-fil-A. Just go to class. Once it's 3.35, you can go to the gym or do anything. is brought to you by Sailor, Emma, and Lucy. Please, Please go, go to class, class on behalf of the ECSN crew. One group doing a good job in school is the JROTC program. This month, Aiden Turner joins the cadets and tries to get through a pretty intense workout in this month's installment of Aiden Attempts It All. Hi, I'm Aiden Turner from ECSN. Welcome back to Aiden Attempts It All. Today I'm here with... Uh, I'm Cadet Connolly with the Wando High School AFJROTC. What position are you in? Uh, I'm the cadet assistant commander for our Raider team. Perfect. What are we doing today? Uh, today we're going to do a little obstacle course, show you all a little bit about what we do. Uh, so we're going to start over here with the jugs. We're going to run a little ways down that way. We're going to pick up a log. We're going to run down to those backpacks down there. We're going to run back with the backpacks. We're going to pick up the jugs and then we're going to finish back here. Perfect. We're going to get started. So he's going to start out by taking the rope and folding it in half to get two equal lengths. And then he's going to take the middle part and put it against his hip. He's going to pull the two lengths to his right hip. He's going to pull the two ends of the ropes between his legs. He's going to push the rope through the back of his belt that he's created. And then he's going to pull them to the front, tie a square knot, and then cinch it off. The person who's helping him up is going to put their knee out. He's going to put one foot on the knee. He's going to grab onto the rope, push himself or straighten out and pull himself down the rope. 
like all of our events are probably my favorite thing out of the whole unit. Like we get to go to uh, Goose Creek, Fort Dorchester. We go to Florida for nationals. So we travel a lot for our team. So it's always fun. <laughs> Because you know you get your your required credits out of the way, you get to meet a lot of new people. Want to kind of a big school, so you want a smaller group of people you can interact with just to narrow things down a bit. Good teams, it's fun, it's interesting. So. There's going to be a fundraiser pickleball tournament at the Park West Gym on April 13th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The deadline to sign up is April 6th. It costs $15 per person and you can have teams of up to four people. But if you want to know what you're playing for, while the winners will get a trophy, the real reason for the tournament is to raise money for the MUSC Children's Hospital. That's all for our show today. If you're interested in joining our staff, scan the QR code on your screen. ECSN is looking for people interested in anchoring, videography, editing, graphics production, sports production, and more. If you have any questions, come see Mr. Fabiano in the TV studio L118. I'm Scarlett Lewis, signing off for ECSN.